if I'm gonna die, if I'm gonna kill myself, I should take some drugs, you know? <laughs> May as well become a junkie because I felt like a junkie every day. Before Nirvana would take home a Grammy and seven MTV Video Music Awards, many of which were stylized out of Kurt Cobain's imagination. Before Kurt Cobain would fall in love with fellow rock star Courtney Love and together the two would welcome a daughter. Before Nirvana's album Nevermind was released in 1991, which would rise to the top of the charts and spearhead a musical revolution welcoming the arrival of grunge. Before Kurt developed a full blown addiction to heroin as a remedy to medicate his chronic stomach pain. I was in pain. I mean, I was in pain for so long that I didn't care if I was in a band. I didn't care if I was alive. Before Kurt Cobain decided to end his own life by putting a pistol in his mouth at his Seattle home on April 5th, 1994, at the age of 27. Hi, I'm Charles Barkley, host of the season premiere of Saturday Night Live with Nirvana. Look, Mom, your favorite, Nirvana. Growing up, Kurt Cobain, he showcased an interest for music and art at an extremely young age. He was diagnosed with ADHD as a child and later in his life as bipolar. Now the young boy, he would go through a serious mourning when his parents divorced when he was nine and all of a sudden the happy and excited youth, well he became introverted and depressed. He scribbled on his wall, I hate mom, I hate dad, dad hates mom, mom hates dad, it simply makes you want to be sad. Now both his parents, they would get into new relationships, his father would remarry and Kurt, well he just became more and more withdrawn. His father did try to get him into organized sports like wrestling and softball, but he had no interest in that. He was experimenting with smoking weed and would get into other drugs. He really didn't find an outlet until his uncle gifted him a guitar. By now, he had an ear for punk music and there was a growing scene in his area. That's when he went out to discover a local group by the name of the Melvins. He auditioned for the group, but he was turned down. That's when he decided to start his own band. Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Michael McCredden, documenting the life and career of Kurt Cobain prior to his passing, here for you and before they were dead. Now, you guys requested this video. In fact, there is one subscriber by the name of Monster with a Z and an X who asked me every day on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram repeatedly. It's actually driving me a little crazy, so this one, it's for you, bud. As always, guys, be sure to let me know in the comments down below who you want to hear about next. Kurt Cobain was born on February 20th, 1967 in Aberdeen, Washington to Wendy Elizabeth, a waitress, and Donald Cobain, a car mechanic. His ancestry includes Dutch, English, French, German, Scottish, as well as Irish, but Kurt identifies mainly with the last on that list. Music and art was always in his blood, with his aunt, uncle, and grandmother being professional artists. Now young Kurt, he took an interest in music extremely young. He began singing at the age of two. The music he would listen to included the Ramones as well as the Beatles. He also loved the theme song for the band The Monkees. But who did? On top of this, he was also obsessed with the film Close Encounters of the Third Kind and could recite the film word for word. His knack for artistry was also discovered extremely young when he received praise in kindergarten for his work as a painter. The guy would spend countless hours in his room doodling away his favorite characters from film and television, including Daffy Duck and the creature from the Black Lagoon. His demeanor was happy, the boy was easily excited, and this resulted in him being diagnosed as ADHD. On top of this, he would also play the piano, and his parents gifted him a Mickey Mouse drum set, and he would pass the time banging on that set. His younger sister, Kimberly, was born on April 24th, 1970, but eventually cracks would form within his nuclear family, with his parents constantly fighting. The young and emotional boy, well, he didn't take this well, and he would grow up to state that it had a devastating impact on him for the rest of his life. He later stated in an interview, I was ashamed of my parents. I couldn't face some of my friends at school anymore because I desperately wanted to have the classic, you know, typical family. Mother, father, I wanted that security, so I resented my parents for quite a few years. Following the divorce, Kurt went to live with his father. He would visit his mother and his sister on the weekends, and his father soon remarried a woman by the name of Jenny, and she would go on to have two new kids. All of a sudden, Kurt, well, he felt like an outsider in his new home. The boy had become so withdrawn, his father decided to enroll him in some team sports. He signed him up for the softball team, but he would strike out on purpose because he didn't want to play. Then he was put on the wrestling team, and he would just lay there and get pinned. He didn't like the other kids on the team. They would bully him as well as the coach, and he didn't mind letting his father down. 
Young Kurt was certainly lost and unhappy with life. He was often the victim of bullying and chose to spend his recesses hanging out with a homosexual kid. Once others thought he was gay, it would allow him to be more of a recluse. Kurt later spoke in an interview about his admiration for those who are in fact gay. He wished it upon himself, also he thought it would piss off a whole lot of homophobes. Now that friend on the recess playground, when he made a move on young Kurt Cobain, well he pulled back, but told the guy we can still be friends. His artistic interests they popped out again when he got involved in making Super 8 films, he recorded a short film in which he committed suicide. Yeah. Dark material. The highlight of Kurt's childhood, it seems, was the gift of an old guitar given to him by his uncle Chuck. He taught himself how to play, and all of a sudden he had an outlet for all his sadness and all his anger. He held odd jobs, he worked as a swimming instructor at the YMCA, he also played with the idea of enlisting in the Navy. During his early teens, around the age of 13, he first smoked weed and he would continue to use. He also would go on to use LSD and later heroin, but we're not there yet. He credits the introduction of drug use into his life as what opened opened his ears to new music and he began listening to punk. At home, Kurt watched his father dote over the new family and he became further removed. His mother had began dating a man she would go on to marry who was abusive and young Kurt witnessed him breaking his mother's arm. Now finally, both of Kurt's parents, well they had had enough with their rebellious son and they decided to ship him off to live with some friends who were born again Christians. They would be dragging young Kurt Cobain to church on the regular and that's where he formed his anti-God outlook on life. He was looking for a place that he could call home and his newfound interest in punk music led him to a local band known as the Melvins. He befriended member Buzz Osborne and all of a sudden he was getting introduced to other punk bands including the Sex Pistols. Now he auditioned to join the Melvins but he didn't make the cut. He was happy in fact just to be hanging around them but then the drug use and the alcohol consumption, well it would reach next level. In 1982 Kurt Cobain decided to move out on his own. He began traveling with rock bands where he'd go to Seattle and Olympia. He also picked up some work so he could keep you know money in his pocket, but all of a sudden the drug use, it was taking its toll on him. Also, these chronic stomach pains, they were certainly getting out of hand. Those two things shouldn't go together, but he thought the heroin it was helping him out. It isn't a specific stomach ailment. It doesn't have a name or anything. I mean, it had been building up for so many years that I was you know, suicidal. To make money, he worked at the Polynesian Resort, but between gigs, he would be homeless and would often sleep at the hospital he was born in in the waiting room. That's when he decided to do something with his own life and he formed his own band in 1982 known as Fecal Matter. He hooked up with Chris Novoselic, who was two years his senior, and they held their first gig at his Aunt Mary's home, which involved a guitar, a bass, and spoons banging against the suitcase. But things weren't so hot and heavy, and Kurt, he was a little lost. In 85, he was found spray painting some buildings and cars, and that got him in trouble with the law. The next year, he was found drunk, traveling around an abandoned building late at night, and that would land him seven days in the slammer. He would rename his group Nirvana, and they would swap through a number of drummers before finding anyone committed enough to keep up with Kurt's vision. He had them rehearsing five nights a week. Kurt also found love with a girl by the name of Tracy Miranda. It would be his first serious girlfriend, and because of her, well, we got the song about a girl. The album dropped in 1989, but failed to do well at the time. It was released under independent label Sub Pop Records, and Kurt felt they were spending the resources on other artists like Soundgarden and Mud Honey. Regardless, Nirvana was on tour, they were promoting Bleach, and he got to hang out with some of his idols, including those in Sonic Youth. On top of this, he was also getting some love from Metallica, who wrote to him saying, we love your album, and then he bumped into a female rocker by the name of Courtney Love. Now, through her contacts, he was also introduced to a drummer by the name of Dave Grohl. With Dave Grohl on board, the group made the jump to major label Geffen Records, and in 1991, they blew the world away with their album Nevermind. All of a sudden, Kurt Cobain, well, he found himself at the top of the chart and he was being credited as one of the best songwriters of the generation. But with all this success, he kept indulging in drug use, including that of heroin. It was his remedy to help with his constant stomach problems. Now, if there wasn't already enough going on in this man's life, well, he fell head over heels for a rocker by the name of Courtney Love, and the two were simultaneously touring in different locations, so they would write, phone, and fax each other as much as they could. Kurt made his admiration for Courtney public when he appeared on the British television show, The Word. Cobain, where he announced Courtney Love, the lead singer of the sensational pop group Hole, is the best fuck in the world. In February of 92, the two were wed and welcomed their daughter, Frances Bean Cobain, on August of that year. Now, Kurt's idea of a honeymoon was to have the two move into a dingy apartment where they would pass their 
time playing on their guitars and indulging in heroin. Courtney revealed to Vanity Fair that she had taken heroin while pregnant, which resulted in child services temporarily taking away their child two days after its birth. Now, Courtney has since stated that she did use heroin while pregnant, but it was during the early months of the pregnancy and she quickly kicked the habit. As for Kurt, well, he was going on a downward spiral. In fact, when his daughter was born, he showed up at the hospital high as hell, and they needed to put him in a stretcher. Clearly, his drug obsession, well, it had gotten out of control. He'd also become very interested in guns. He would get his hands on so many, and then he would buy meat at the grocery store, take it into his backyard in Seattle, and shoot bullets at the raw meat. In 1993, Kurt was arrested for assault against Courtney. The police also took the guns from the home but he managed to pull it together enough to record in utero, which again would top the charts. On March 4th, 1994, things were pretty rocky for Kurt Cobain. Him and Courtney, they were having their falling outs, and all of a sudden, well, the man decided to overdose on muscle relaxers, and uh, well, Courtney, she knew something was up. The man was rushed to the hospital and revived, even though he was in a coma. He had even left a suicide note. Now, this all went down in Rome, Italy. Kurt then came back to America, where he became a recluse. He would spend his time indulging in drug use by himself and eventually well there was an intervention held and he was sent to a medical facility but after two short days he booked himself out. On April 5th 1994 in the guest house behind his Seattle home the 27 year old Kurt Cobain committed suicide. He placed a shotgun into his mouth and fired killing himself instantly. He left a lengthy suicide note in there he addressed many of his fans as well as his wife and his newborn daughter. Like you don't know how to recover from something like that there's no there's no textbook to help you through something as tragic and horrific as that. Now there's tons of speculation surrounding Kurt Cobain's passing, with some people questioning if it was a suicide at all. I can go into more depth about Kurt Cobain and his legacy in a new series I'm cooking up known as After They Were Dead. Let me know if that's something you guys want to see in the comments down below. <laughs> For the rest of the story, well, the story lives on in his music. My name is Michael McCrudd, and thanks for checking out Before They Were Dead. How would you define the music of Nirvana? With a twist to one. Now, I do all sorts of celebrity bios on here. I've done a lot of The Departed in the past. Be sure to check out that playlist. But there's all sorts of great videos. we got Before They Were Famous, After They Were Famous, and uh, a bunch of random stuff. So be sure to browse, subscribe, and, uh, well, leave your condolences for The Departed down below.